Coming up this week on Sporting Journal Radio. Drew the weapon, took two shots, took off running, hit the floor. Which I thought was kind of brilliant. I never really thought about that. So that's my big trip that I need to get ready for. Broadcasting on the Sporting Journal Radio Network. Wherever you get your podcasts or watch on YouTube. Well, we're here at the 2024 Pheasant Fest and Quail Classic. Presented by OnX. Know where you stand with OnX. And our guest now is Jeremy Smith. I fish, I hunt, and always will. So to look out for your everyday hunter, angler, and trapper that's out there. A Fish on Forever production. This is Sporting Journal Radio. How did it feel for Sam Soholt to rupture his Achilles tendon? I feel like that's a terrible way to tease the show. I feel bad for <laughs> Sam for doing it, but oh my God. We're going to ask Sam Soholt that question coming up this week on the show. Also, uh, Joe Henry's going to talk about Lake of the Woods, and we're going to talk about spinners and how to catch walleyes on spinners. Well, actually, we're going to talk about somebody else talking about how to do it. <laughs> we'll explain coming up. I'm Brett Amundsen. That's Dan Amundsen over there. Dan, what's up? Uh, do you think, can we talk about Greg Jones' hook set for once? <laughs> Has he ever had a calm hook set? Because it's no. awesome. He just like almost falls out of his chair in that one in our open. Well, so. he didn't want to lose the fish. I don't blame him. I think it's great because now it's burned into Sporting Journal Radio history. If you don't know what we're talking about, rewind, watch the open. On, on our YouTube channel. That's David Eckert over there. What's up, David? Not much. How are you living? Well, day by day. Well, there you go. You got a new Toyota, by the way. Congratulations. I did. Thank you. How do you like it? I like it. <laughs> That's right. And Toyota, Invergrove Toyota specifically, one of our sponsors this week. Dan, why don't you roll through our sponsors? Here we go. Invergrove Toyota is the official truck sponsor of Fish Hunt Forever. When looking for a new rig like David did, uh, head over to Invergrove Toyota. Lake of the Woods Tourism. Lake of the Woods is the walleye capital. Plan a trip for this open water season at Lake of the Woods, MN.com. On X Hunt, see private land boundaries, recent imagery, offline maps, and Minnesota specific hunt layers. I'm pretty sure that's true for all of the Midwest. Download the Onyx Hunt app today. Tazan Lake Lodge, catch world record lake trout and giant pike at Saskatchewan's Tazan Lake. Learn more at tazanlake.com. Devils Lake, North Dakota, catch it all at Devils Lake. Prairie Sportsman, the new season is wrapped up. You can watch episodes anytime at the Prairie Sportsman YouTube channel. Haybell Heights Campground and Resort. Fish Devils Lake at Haybell Heights this summer. Learn more at haybellheights.com. And Guardian Eagle Resort, come fish the Ontario waters of Guardian Eagle Resort. Fly directly from Minneapolis. Learn more at guardianeagle.com. I've wanted to see it for a long time, and Dan, you and I finally got to see Minis the Minnesota State Record Walleye. We did. Yeah. So this was caught on the Seagull River. Shh. Up off the... I mean, it's, that's no Seagull. You can Google that. But it's caught up at the end of the Gunflin Trail. It was years ago. It was back uh, at a part of the river that's really shallow. It's a traditional spawning area. You can't catch the fish in there anymore that time of year it's that's not only is that closed off but obviously the season is closed that time of year so that fish will never be caught again uh mostly because it's well, dead it's dead yeah, it? yeah right like, <laughs> <laughs> so i always wanted with prairie sportsman that the fish was in a glass case it was mounted in a glass case and it was in the living room of the guy that caught i can't remember his name now the guy that caught Lori it. something right um minnesota state record Walleye. This is great radio. I know. Great Seagull radio. River, 1979. It was 17 pounds and eight ounces, and it was caught by oh, what the heck? That's a huge. I, I clicked on the wrong website, of course. Uh, Leroy Shiovitz. Oh, uh, Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> 17 pounds, eight ounces, and it was in his living room. So he caught I, it in his living room? Yes, he caught it sitting on his couch. <laughs> so when people when people say things like, you can't see this sitting on the couch, well, maybe you could. If you're sitting on Leroy's anyway, you'd be able to see that state record walleye. So I always wanted to do a story with Prairie Sportsman and uh, go up there and film with him. Well, he, I, I believe he passed away and then his wife was like what do i do with this mount now and they decided the best place for it would be at the is it the the chick walk is that how you say that the chick walk museum so. that's how it looks anyways up at the north end of the gunflint trail and um it's not far from where it was caught so uh basically it went back home and if you want to see it it's on display at this museum and uh, dan and i we've driven by that i don't know how many times going up the gunflint and we finally said, you know what? <laughs> We're going to meet everybody at Trail Center for breakfast. And they all went to breakfast and we stopped and made them wait and went through the museum. 
So sorry, guys, about that. But um, not was, really. Not really. It was pretty cool walking through there. It is actually a neat little museum. You know, you expect you don't know what to expect with anything at, in a wilderness spot like that, especially a museum. But yet, a part of me wondered. Like we drove by, I think it was called like the Great Lakes Fishing Museum, and some little town along the North Shore. It was like just this tiny little shack, and there's probably like two downriggers and a commercial net or something in there you know you don't know what to expect but this had three different buildings it had uh as your dad said it had hubert h humphreys johnson in it <laughs> johnson outboard <laughs> just That's to right. clarify but, yeah he um, said that very loudly at breakfast yeah at the trail center <laughs> you guys went and saw hubert h humphreys johnson An outboard motor yes <laughs> so, and uh so, thanks dad <laughs> he's so, hilarious but, by the way yeah. But so there's like three different buildings, a lot of history, especially if you've been up the Gunflint Trail and kind of know the area. Uh, we learned there was a mine there and yeah. they, they showed every single piece of iron they mined from that mine uh, is on display at, at this museum. It was a horseshoe. Yeah, I think is what that was. This At least the size of it, it was about this big. So they had to close <laughs> the mine down. Yeah. Um, but really cool. There's a nature center there. There's the museum. And then it was like a marine watercraft exhibit. But let's That's not skip was. over what else is in the nature museum. The, the state record Splake. Splake. Get, David, take a guess how big you, you think the state record Splake is. I wouldn't even know where to start. Yeah. Do you I, know what a Splake is? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's, just, <laughs> <laughs> it's a lake trout, brook trout. Uh, hybrid and uh, I can't remember which one it is it's like the female one and the male of the other oh, and a it, daddy fish loves yeah but I mean fish. if you if you go the other way it's a different it's a different hybrid so uh, so it's a it's a speckled trout and lake trout that's where the name splake comes from so maybe it's a yeah whatever I don't know but it was over 10 pounds We're professionals hmm. I don't remember how big it was but it was over 10 pounds which I oh. didn't think I mean I know lake trout get that big but I, obviously we don't you don't see brookies that big in, in Minnesota anyway. I don't I've never heard of one anyway. So that's a pretty big <laughs> fish. And you can see that at the Nature Center at the Chickwalk Museum on the Gunflint Trail. Uh, we, if you are on your way to Ontario, the Gunflint's maybe not the way you want to go, especially if you're going to Guardian Eagle Resort. It might take you out of the way. In fact, you don't have to drive at all except to the Anoka Airport. If you're in the Twin Cities, get on a plane there. You can fly right up to their 3,000-foot runway at Guardian Eagle Resort and catch walleyes and pike in 75,000 acres of private water. Find out more at GuardianEagle.com. That's GuardianEagle.com. Dot com. Dan, last week when we were up there, actually, we were in Ontario last week. This is correct. We were pulling spinners to catch most of our fish. This is also correct. We talked about it a little bit last week on the show. Also and correct. For well, I Oh, I forgot. We got a sounder for this. The video to watch. Oh. This is a professional show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> video of the week. Well, try again. Okay. Our video of the week, ladies and gentlemen, comes to us from The Next Bite. Which uh, we should talk about. You the next sound a lot like the guy who the voices next that. Show. Bite. That's because I am. Is That's right. <laughs> so uh, check it out. Um, it's a video from about two weeks ago or two years ago. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it's uh, Corey Sprengel breaking down how he uses spinners to catch walleyes. And I, I found out a couple of things I want to share with you guys that I thought were interesting. First of all, he he ties all his own spinners, and I'm sure a lot of these you know, pro guys like that probably do that. Um, but I wanted to find out why. And one of the reasons why is he uses seven foot trolling rods. So he likes to use a little bit shorter trolling rods. And when he ties his own spinners, he makes them five feet so that when he ties his rods up for travel or, tra you know, in the, when he's moving the boat around or whatever, they fit perfectly on his rod, which I thought was kind of brilliant. I never really thought about that. Because how many times, especially if you have a bottom bouncer on, how many times are you wrapping the extra length of your leader, you know, around your rod handle or your, you know, that bottom bouncer's bouncing all over the place? Um, kind of brilliant to make it the right length for the rods that you're using. Now, this is also what I thought was pretty interesting is he has a, when he ties his hooks, like a two hook uh, uh, crawler harness, he uses a treble hook in the back. You guys I are, think that's brilliant. Have you, have you guys ever done that before? Uh, no, I never have. But it's a good idea. Yeah. Thanks for that input. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, just, I wish I would have thought of spinner, it. Spinner connoisseur, David. <laughs> hey, I tie my own. Do you? Oh, do you? Are they five foot? They're 
Sometimes they're four, sometimes they're six. I don't know. I'm not very good at it, but it's what, whatever, tie length, my own. whatever length you just pull the line. Yeah, up. exactly. Yeah. Looks you, good. Why do you tie your own? Just to save money, or just yeah? You just, like well, you're the I kind like of guy that combos. I'm surprised you don't build your own boat, David. Like you're just a guy like oh yeah, I can build that, and man, I don't need to go buy it. Um, one of the other things he does then is he puts beads on there, and then depending on what size blade he uses. Depends on, on the number of beads that he puts on there. So he doesn't want his blade to cover up that front hook. So he basically puts enough beads on there just to go a little bit longer than his blade size. So watch for that video. Go to the Next Bite YouTube channel and learn more about how, how Corey Springle uh, uses spinner rigs. And then I, I, obviously the guy knows a little bit about pulling spinners since he designed some plastics for pulling spinners. Um, yeah, he's kind of good at fishing. <laughs> he's yeah. caught a fish or two once in a while. That's kind of lucky. That same episode, he breaks down how he uses side scan to check for structure. Uh, Keith Cavias talks about how the like he's got what has he got what four hundred or something on his on his Probably. boat. And he talked about how the hull can make a huge difference in what effect your motor size has on how fast you can go. And when he switched that four hundred, he got up to sixty seven miles an hour in that boat. It's just yeah. Hauling. There's a few of them rigs doing 70 plus now. That's it's crazy. Kind of wicked. When this was two years ago, so you might be Correct. going faster. Yeah. Well, now, yeah. So. Now there's a new V10 out, so you know. Well, check that out. And he catches us. He's on a Great Lake. He doesn't say which Great Lake he's on. I don't think Corey. Probably and then guess uh, it's Michigan. He catches a surprise fish at the end, real quick. What do you guys think the surprise fish? King salmon. Wasn't not a salmon, David. <sighs> I don't know. It was a tank. <laughs> Thanks for Coho. David, you're <laughs> doing a lot. <laughs> yeah, sweetie. really, really contributing. Just trying to think quickly here. on your feet there, Dave. <laughs> All Tell right. me one more thing you think it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a walleye, I don't know. <laughs> it's a surprise fish. Surprise He's catching fish. walleyes all the time. Okay, you guys are all my best. You guys are all wrong so far. I'm not going to give away. Should I give it away or should I make you guys watch the video? It's a catfish. Check it out on the Next Bite YouTube channel. That is all not right. what I expected. Right, right. And it was it was a big one too. On a great yeah, catching a cat out yeah. there trolling on the Great Lakes for walleyes. That seems bizarre. You know, ticked off you'd be because you know catfish <laughs> always get like you catch catfish. You think it's a big walleye. You're on a Great Lake. Where you don't think of a Tank catfish, walleye. you're like, oh, 15 Tank pound walleye. walleye. Yeah. And it's a catfish. Like, come <laughs> on. <laughs> All right, Sam Sohold talks about his injury and what he saw at Vortex when we come back. All right, if you're looking for a world class fishing destination, you don't have to go any further than Devil's Lake, North Dakota. Check out uh, Devil's Lake, where the walleye bite remains strong even through the dog days of summer. Visit Devil's Lake ND.com to learn more and plan your next trip to Devil's Lake. Now is the time to start thinking about chasing big walleyes on Devil's Lake. Get on the fish at Hay Bale Heights Campground and Resort. Hay Bale Heights makes it easy for you to make memories on legendary Devil's Lake with guided fishing and lodging packages. Or bring your own boat and rent one of their cabins on East Bay. Hay Bale Heights offers a private marina, fish cleaning station, and the opportunity to relax and enjoy your bucket list trip to Devil's Lake, North Dakota. To book your trip, visit haybaleheights.com. That's haybaleheights.com. All right, welcome back to Sporting Journal Radio. I'm Brett Amundsen, along with Dan Amundsen and David Eckhart. And Sam Soholt, ladies and gentlemen, is our guest right now, the one-legged wonder, the pirate. <laughs> Do you, have, you need to get, like, a parrot on your shoulder now or an eye patch. You got the peg leg. Was, How you doing, Sam? I'm doing well. I was thinking about painting my boot. Originally, I was going to do camo, but maybe, like, a, more like a log. Like, have it be, like, a stump. Um, <laughs> Pe so peg leg. Be more, more piratey. <laughs> Love it. Uh, all right, so... So I remember seeing your, I think probably on Instagram, you posted uh, a story and um, Dan right away thought Achilles. I remember you saying that right I'm away. I'm a medical Dan. professional. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. And uh, and then when, when I talked to you, you said, I think you said maybe a muscle tear in your calf or something like that. Was that? So, yep. and now it turns out to be an Achilles. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Tear. Full rupture. Oh yeah. man. That, God dang. That, I do mean just thinking about that. Just it just hurts like thinking about yeah. it. Yeah, um, uh, you know, fortunately there wasn't really a lot of pain. Um, oh, uh, so like the injury itself didn't hurt all that much, and then like there was a pop, and you know, obviously some swelling and stuff. But like, as long as I wasn't like trying to put a bunch of pressure like on my front toe and lift my heel, um, there was no pain. Um, and so, yeah, so I was doing a shooting drill at Vortex Edge. Um, had been down for the 
at a Vortex Ambassador Summit. They just wanted to run through like all the new products coming, kind of the whole brand history, you know, get into like what they're doing going forward and to like have all of us be able to kind of talk to each other about different ideas and stuff. And also we got to run through the pistol training while we were there at Vortex Edge. So we had shot all morning from the line and then we were going to do a moving drill. So you, you take two shots, you run forward 10 yards, take two shots. Simple enough. Um, I did three dry runs, full speed, no problem. Um, and then my first live like round, I drew the weapon, took two shots, took off running, hit the floor, like face down. Didn't even have time to catch myself. Um, basically like my leg wasn't even there when I tried to push off it. So, um, I rolled over, you know, of course I, I'm in, now I'm in like injury mode, right? So like I have a handgun in my hand, but I rolled over like, what the hell just happened, you know? And, you know, and then I, like the instructor was gun, 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 you know? So then I just like put it, <laughs> put it back over my head and just dropped it. Um, and then the, there was, it was awesome. There was a combat medic who was one of the instructors and he came over and had me, he took my shoe off and then had me move my foot, you know, and, and uh, he's like, typically when I see full Achilles tears, like you're not able to, like you have a dead foot basically. Um, and I was able to move it a little bit. So I went to the ER and kind of told the ER doc what had happened. And then she did, there's a test that they do where they lay you on your um, stomach and then they squeeze like your calf and, you know, they squeeze in a certain spot and then your toe moves up. Well, she, it, my foot must have wiggled just a little bit or something. And, uh, she told me that I did not have a torn Achilles. And so then they didn't give me a boot. They didn't give me a splint. They didn't give me anything. I walked out of there, um, limping and then spent another day at Vortex limping around. Like, uh, the second day was mostly just classroom type stuff. Um, and then I drove home like nine hours the next day. And, you know, like I've been icing, um, like, three times a day, keeping it elevated, the whole thing, like through this whole thing, ordered a boot online. I had uh, texted my cousin who's a PT, got that um, ordered at about a third the price. So if anybody ever needs a boot, go to Amazon, get an air cast, 75 mm. bucks instead of 300. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I got a boot and then it just, it, it just really still didn't feel good. And I like felt I could feel like a divot in my Achilles. Um, so I had assumed that there was at least a partial tear. And um, I called Monday morning and they were able to get me in to see an ortho on Monday. And I went in, he's like, oh yeah, you're, they did an ultrasound. He's like, oh yeah, your Achilles is torn, ruptured fully. Oh um, my gosh. We'll get you scheduled for an MRI and then we'll get you scheduled with podiatry, you know, right after that. And so I went to scheduling. Well, they scheduled me for an MRI on July 10th, um, which was at the time was 16 days uh, from when I saw the ortho. Um, and typically with Achilles injuries, you want to try to do, if you need surgery, you want to try to do it within two weeks of getting the injury. Um, it just gives you the best chance of <clears throat> having the tendon, you know, get sewn back together and then heal up a lot faster than if you wait, you know, a month or whatever. So... Uh, I was like, July 10th, gosh, that's like another, you know, uh, then I'm three weeks past the injury. And then, you know, after that, I'm probably another week until surgery. So I'm looking at like, you know, a month from when I heard it. Um, and so I just decided that that was not the right answer. And I most basically spent all day yesterday on the phone, sending messages, reaching out to people. Um, and I booked my own MRI. I just found a imaging clinic, um, called and asked the cost and figured it out. And it was like, I was like, well, <clears throat> even if I'm just paying cash for it, if it moves my, uh, appointment up and my surgery up that far, it's probably worth, I mean, like the amount of money and time it's worth to have this done and be recovering, like is huge right now. Cause I have, you know, got a lot, <laughs> I got a lot of stuff going on. Well, yeah, okay, um, Sam, let's just <laughs> hang on. What trip this fall? Are you trying to make sure <laughs> you're trying to make sure so, well, 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 it's big. <laughs> it's actually bigger than that. Um, you know, the fall will probably be pretty skimpy for me. I'll probably be able to do, you know, still some photography stuff and I'll do a lot of educational, you know, like system rundowns, that kind of thing from the garage. And, you know, I'll, I'll do a lot more of that type of content. Um, but I've got a baby coming August 30th mm -hmm. and I need to, to be eight weeks post-op 
instead of like three to four weeks post-op is going to make an absolute world of difference um, because I'll have two weeks, no weight bearing. Um, yeah, two weeks, no weight bearing, and then I'll be starting PT. And so I'll have six weeks of PT leading up to when the due date is. You know, obviously, you don't know when it's actually going to show up. But so that's my big trip that I need to get ready for. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Sam Soholder's our guest. I, I want to talk to you a little bit more about when that injury happened and what that was like, because everyone describes the sound of a pop. And I want I want you to describe that. But real quick, uh, if you've got family on the way and you're looking for a new truck, maybe you should get the old uh, the crew cab Tundra from Invergrove Toyota. And right now you can lease a Toyota Tundra at Invergrove Toyota. It's easier than ever. Just $5.99 a month with $3,000 down. And we've got a deal for you too here through Fish Hunt Forever. Go to uh, either look for the link below, the link in the comments, link in the description, or go to sportingjournalradio.com. Click on the Tundra deal at Invergrove Toyota. Save money on your next Toyota Tundra, Tacoma, uh, Camry, Highlander, whatever. We'll save you some money. Go check that out. So, Sam, you you hit the deck. So, did you, you know, you described it as running through that drill and then boom, your leg was gone. Was it, was the leg just, did it just go like go numb or did it have so much pain that you fell and was there an, there was an audible pop that you heard or you felt it? How, did it describe that moment of the rupture? So I didn't, um, I didn't hear the pop, um, but like after I hit the floor, like I, you know, my brain finally caught up and was like, yeah, like your calf popped. Um, but dude, it was the weirdest thing. Like took off running, took a couple steps and literally like, it was just like, it was like my leg went through the floor. Like I, it was like I had stepped into <laughs> like nothingness and all of a sudden I was face down. Um, like one of my buddies that was watching me, he's like, you didn't even try to catch yourself. Like it was that fast. Like I have, uh, I like skinned both my elbows on the concrete floor because I just like was hold you know, running with the gun. All of a sudden I was just on the concrete. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it was not great. Not a great feeling. Um, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> is there a person who has torn their Achilles and goes, ah, hey, yeah, that's that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> kind of fun. I feel better. Let's, let's do yeah. that again. Jeez. Schedule another one next yeah. week. Yeah. But, but one thing I wanted to say was like, I spent literally, uh, so I had my ortho appointment. I spent the whole next day just calling and sending messages and getting stuff, tried to get stuff moved up. So like I said, I got my MRI scheduled myself paid cash for it. So I went down this morning and got that done. Um, and then because I had kind of been reaching out to people, I had a family member who works in the hospital system and she was able to get me a referral to a really good doc. And I saw him this morning and now I have surgery tomorrow. So rather oh, wow. than wait, yeah. So rather than waiting another two weeks to even get imaged, now I'm going to be starting to recover, uh, on Friday instead of like whatever mid July. So doing that, that way you just talked about paying cash does that mean like if you're are you going outside the network are, are you going to still be able to cover some of that with insurance now or are you talking about paying that out of your so, pocket so the mri i'll pay it's just out of pocket um and, but i i call like so with insurance it's it's the dumbest system right so with insurance they charge a bunch of extra money for it so all of it would have come out of my deductible anyway um and so I, in the long run, yeah, it's going to be a little extra money out of my pocket, but it probably saved me like 21 days of time. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. So the rest will be in network, the doctors under my insurance. Um, and so once I meet my deductible, the rest will be covered. But man, I just, I can't tell people enough. Like if you're in a situation where you have an injury or you're trying to get something done, like the hospital is, you know, they, <clears throat> they have a business, they are running a system and they're doing it by the book. But if you actually advocate for yourself and try to like call and hound people and get stuff moved up you can typically you know get things done a little bit faster if you just you know you're sitting there injured anyway might yeah. as well be on the phone <laughs> trying to get it fixed man sam so old is our guest we got to take a quick break i want to ask sam about i'm going to ask him how much an mri is and then um 
talk a little bit more about Vortex, what he saw there, see if he can give us any hints, if there's any new products that haven't been announced that he got his hands on, see if we can get him to spill the beans about that. Uh, but first, I want to tell you about World Class Trophy Lake Trout Northern Pike Fishing in Northwest Saskatchewan. Book a trip to Tazan Lake Lodge. Maybe see us while you're up there. Uh, or watch Tazan TV on the Tazan Lake Lodge YouTube channel. Book your trip and find out now. Book it for the rest. Uh, there's still some open dates for this summer or book a trip for next summer. Go to Tazan Lake dot com more sam when we come back hunting season will be here before you know it and it's time to get ready for your next adventure with the onyx hunt app whether you're traveling in search of roosters elk waterfowl or looking to score on a whitetail close to home onyx hunt can help you be more successful this season route plan and navigate with private and public land boundaries recent imagery offline maps and minnesota specific hunt layers download the hunt app on the app store or google play and join the millions of hunters that trust on x hunt we're back sporting journal radio sam soholt is our guest the uh the hobbled sam soholt i'm glad uh that you're on on the mend and that it's recovery you know you're recovering man that that just sounds like a a, a tough injury a ruptured achilles tendon um and you are have, before the break talked about how important it is to try to try to find a way to get surgery scheduled and get this get get on the path to recovery as soon as possible so you went out and searched out a way to get an mri searched out to uh maybe a a, a, a second doctor maybe it sounded like you said to get a, get a second opinion on it and you found a way to get surgery moved up so you can recover faster but you went out and got your own MRI and I'm curious and you're paying for it out of your pocket maybe you don't want yeah. to talk about how much this is but I can't imagine that was very cheap no so you know it's better than I thought it was going to be like when you google like what's the average MRI price it's like anywhere between four hundred and twelve thousand dollars and so um <laughs> and so <laughs> luckily it's just a I, big ballpark there yeah you know? yeah so luckily the one i needed was um there it is it was just my ankle without contrast so obviously if you do contrast you have to you know basically drink a dye or whatever and like then it changes the imaging and uh, there's a bunch of different little nuances but um i called a couple places and to do you know it's they were going to charge my insurance 900 bucks um, but i was out of network and if i paid cash it was 700. Hmm. Okay, well, that's yeah. not too bad. So it's bad, not though. cheap. It's not cheap, but it it you know again it probably afforded me three weeks time. So I'll take you know I'll take that every day. Well, obviously there were a couple of reasons why you wanted to get on the the path to recovery sooner than later. You've got plans this fall, which include a, a new addition to the family. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, that's, thank you. That's very awesome. Um, what do you know? What it, did you? I can't remember. Have you announced what it is? Do you know what it is yet? What's going to be? No, nope. going to keep it a surprise. Yep. So have, yep, have no is it idea. Gonna be, is it going to be a surprise for you guys, or are you just not going to tell the world? Yep, have no idea. Uh, da, we just, but I, yeah. Da, it's like I get that, and none of us here have kids, I guess, so we can't really speak from experience. But I feel like I would just want. I wouldn't have to tell anybody, but I'd want to know just so I can buy the. You know, I guess as they're babies, you're not buying much for clothes really but you're buying diapers more than anything but um just to be prepared you know like yeah. i don't the know the way we the way we thought about it was there's very few surprises left um and so as long as everything you know if there was a complication or whatever we probably would have tried to find out oh, sure. um but sure. like so far so good everything's healthy um yeah it's just uh figured we just move forward with you know as long as it comes out healthy I bet you were surprised when you ruptured your Achilles tendon the other day. I bet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet that, that was a shocker. That was definitely a surprise. <clears throat> so, but, uh, is it your right or left foot? Left foot, so I can still drive. Yeah, I was gonna say you uh, said you drove home, so I was wondering how painful that was. Yeah, <laughs> you ever tried to no, drive with your left foot? It's not easy. No, it's yeah. not easy. Not easy at all. Um, yeah, the, I I drove home. And I had tried to keep my foot up most of the time and I wrapped, I went to the gas station and got frozen veggies that was, you know, like in the freezer <laughs> section. And, I, and then I just wrapped those on my calf and drove home with my foot up on the, on the dash for most of the way. So. so you open, open the bag and have a little snack halfway through. Yeah. Well, they were warm peas. by the time I got done. <laughs> 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 Yuck. Yeah. So, so this happened at Vortex Edge. So now Vortex is located down in southeastern Minnesota, right? Or they're on the Minnesota side? They're on the Wisconsin yep. side. Okay. Yep. So um, is that like is Vortex Edge, That's is that a shooting range or a facility? And then is it attached? Is it nearby? 
Yeah, so it's a separate building on the same campus, okay. um, but it's awesome. You have uh, multiple pistol ranges, and then they also have a 100-yard range, and they can mm. do um, long-range shooting classes and stuff there. Um, but, the man, the instructor, like, I was having a great time. I was learning a ton right up until I <laughs> blew my leg out. Um, <laughs> so I would, I would highly recommend going and, like, doing the class because it, it is sweet. Um, like, I had no idea how much I didn't know about handguns. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was super cool. Yeah. I would like to do that. You know, yeah. I, I, it, it even forgot, you know, I've got handguns and I've had them for a while. So, you know, I, I know how to shoot a handgun obviously, but just getting some of that tr- actual training and you know, whether, it, whether it's a self-defense or tactical or whatever type of train, just some handgun training and shooting training would be what I think it's important for anybody that's going to have a gun. Yeah. Yeah. But man, I like that. It, yeah, when you start cool. shooting, you know, like they're like, oh, see how you're hitting to the right? Your your support hand just isn't tight enough. You see how, mm-hmm. you know, and then like you see how you're shooting low. It just means you're drop, you know, you're dropping the gun right at the last second. Like, like every little detail, they're like, oh, this is what you're doing. Just fix that. Interesting. Um, yeah. And and then obviously you you do a lot with Vortex. You're always talking about their socks. Mm-hmm. And. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and other products, of course. So you were there to learn a little bit about the new line of products that are coming out this year or maybe are out. Was, is, it, is, is it stuff that hasn't been announced yet or stuff that's slowly coming out? Some of both. Um, we kind of went through some of the launches that have happened this spring, like this one here. Um, the, the new uh, Razer UHD 8x32s. Like, so they're super small. Um, but crystal clear. They're not quite, <laughs> they're not quite this small, <laughs> uh, but, uh, um, but yeah, so the, those, and then they just dropped a, like a very affordable spotting scope line. So the crossfire mm. HD line. Um, and I, they, they sent one to me, you know, I haven't put like hours and hours behind it, but I threw it up on the deck and was just like glass and stuff like off the back and like for a, whatever, $300, optic um i was blown away at how clear the imagery was um you know obviously at low light you're probably gonna it's not gonna be as good as a two thousand dollar optic um but for your everyday use you know if you're driving around glass on the truck doing velvet bucks if you're doing you know just at a day at the range you know whatever that kind of thing um it is a sweet setup and for most people who aren't you know spending days and days and days behind a spotter um every year it's like very affordable and still has, you know, obviously still has the warranty and the, all that stuff. So that's right. I think you did show some of those videos on mm-hmm. uh, maybe some on Instagram or something like that. I remember showing yeah. that and then, okay. So what else haven't they announced that you can tell us about on the show right now? That <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so there's a bunch of new apparel coming, which is okay. sweet. Their apparel team came in and talked to us about a bunch of stuff over for like the next 18 months. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then uh, I mean, if anybody that's followed along with Vortex, you know, they're always pushing the envelope. Um, And so there is a lot. I can't talk about any of it because I signed signed NBA. Come on. Um, But there's there's a lot of stuff that's coming down the pipeline. Um, It'll be a very aggressive, like, you know, schedule of cool stuff hitting the table. So I went down to we went down to Alabama doing some hog hunting and I bought a new gun and I put this on it because I wanted to be able to have something to shoot you know, with uh, so an optic with a little bit of zoom to it or uh, to be able to shoot a, a, you know, a hog, but also have something that I could use at close range in some sort of self-defense situation. So it seemed like a pretty good option for the first thing that I put on there. But the beauty is that I'll probably swap it out and get something else. Cause after, after doing it now, I want Now I want a little more magnification. So I'll probably get a sure. zoom. I'll, I'll probably put a thermal on uh, honestly, but this was, this was really kind of nice. Uh, a nice option that I put on that gun Sweet. that I brought yeah. down there. So, yeah. all right. Well, um, what what else do you have coming up plan? Maybe public land tees or what else you want to talk about that you got coming up? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, um, let's see, we're end of June. Yeah, I'll start yeah, talking Are you going to sell it. a t-shirt that will go to your Achilles fund? Like that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Gosh, I mean, I'll wait till I get the bill back. I might have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> you know, we're going to, we're in the Fargo Shields right now. Uh, Public Land oh, Tees cool. got picked up by Shields, but we're going to be in a bunch more stores by the end of July. Um, so we're super excited about that. That's um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember how many exactly. It's like twelve or thirteen more stores that we'll be in. Oh, really? So, nice. Yeah. So now, super jacked. 
I know we had this conversation off the air, I think, one time, or maybe it was on the show, I don't remember. But I may, you may have been working at Shields, because you worked at Fargo Shields uh, back in the day. And you I may did. be there, you may have been there when I bought my first bow at that location, actually. It's possible. I, you know, you probably wouldn't have seen me because I was working in the freight room. Um, oh, but sure. I, <laughs> but, but uh, which was sweet because they let me work whatever hours I wanted. And I was just back there just tagging ammo and fishing lures and, you know, just getting after it. <laughs> That's funny. And I'm going to date myself a little bit, but one of my first jobs was at a Burger Brothers back in the day. It was pre, <laughs> nice. pre-Gander Mountain. Yeah, I wasn't flipping burgers. I was. Uh, work- I know what Burger Brothers is. You I don't was have to look at me working and shipping and receiving, but doing the same thing. I was in the back, so I got mm-hmm. I got a discount to all the products in the store, and I didn't have to be out there uh, <laughs> helping people yeah. out. It was kind of yeah, nice. It was perfect. Yeah, <laughs> it was perfect. Yeah, <laughs> my mom worked at Burger Brothers actually. Yeah, she did the yeah. one in Woodbury. That's I remember correct. that. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't get a job at that one. I had to work at the one in Minnetonka. Well, so why I- do you think that was? <laughs> she knew you. <laughs> <laughs> I had to drive a long ways every day to get to work. I didn't like it. But um, that was that was when I was supporting my radio habit at one point. I worked radio on the weekends, and I had to have a real job during the week to support my radio habit. So Me too. Yep. All right, Sam. Well, um, anything else you want to talk about, or where can we find find stuff online, or uh, obviously Fargo Shields? And then uh, is there going to be – are you going to do like a um, – you like put the x-rays up or anything i mean what like an achilles update or uh like yeah uh yeah i uh i do have they gave me a disc like a cd with all of my uh mri imaging on really so i i could post some of that if i can find a like a disc you know i need something (laughs) i can actually put a disc in um i don't don't have one of those anymore either (laughs) no um but yeah i'll uh i'll have to share some imaging i also thought about like just privately doing like a daily update on like the surgery I had and then the recovery mm. and then posting it all at once on a different YouTube channel. Like just for people who like, if they end up in the same boat as me, like this is what you can expect. Um, you know, and then this is what happens when you follow your, your PT, like as well as possible and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. Well, they say it happens in three. So you had, you had Aaron Rodgers. Kirko Chains and Sam Soholt, the year of the, the, year of the Achilles tendon injuries. Uh, I don't know if I count as a third, but I, I, guess, I guess I don't mind. I don't mind being mentioned with you know those two professional right. football players. It's a good thing we had Frank Ragno on before. Yeah. He doesn't catch the Achilles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ages. Right. Uh, all right, Sam. Well, good luck. Um, good luck with the recovery. Uh, of course, good luck with uh, the incoming baby. And uh, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. If you want to catch a big walleye, go where the big walleyes are. Lake of the Woods is the walleye capital of the world. With a variety of resorts and lodging facilities offering full-service fishing, Lake of the Woods is also home to sturgeon, sauger, perch, trophy pike, muskie, smallmouth bass, burbot, and more. Plan your trip to Lake of the Woods today. Go to lakeofthewoodsmn.com. That's lakeofthewoodsmn.com. Hi, right, Joe. Henry joins us from Lake of the Woods Tourism to talk about fishing up at the Walleye Capital right now on the show. Joe, what's happening? Hey, Brett. Uh, tell you what, man. Uh, we're, we're lucky. You, you know what? Uh, fishing's good, but I guess when you have an estimated 10 million walleyes and a whole bunch of saugers, it, it should be good most of the time, shouldn't it? I, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you'd think so. Um, I wanted to bring something up because I saw a post on the internet the other day. And um, I mean, I knew the answer to this and there, there were a few replies that answered the question, but somebody had said, hey, does anybody know of any lodges or guides on Lake of the Woods that'll take six people and, a, and one of their kids? And they had been calling around and they couldn't find one to do it. And then finally somebody told them why they couldn't go on a charter boat with seven people. And that's because of the licensing up there, right, Joe? Well, you know, it's not the licensing necessarily up there, but what it is is, um, you know, there's certain waters that you have to have um, a Coast Guard captain's license. The license, Technically, yeah. the license, Brett, yeah. Yep, yeah, technically it's called an OUPV, um, Operator of Uninspected Passenger Vessel License. And that license um, is, it allows you to take paying customers up to six paying customers on a vessel. And that's why, you know, you, you see charter boats run six people. The boat itself in most cases could handle more people and more weight, but it's it's because of the, the captain's license that, you know, up to six paying customers. So that's why, and 
people were just abiding by the by the law of the Coast Guard. You know, it's interesting um, when when you go to Lake of the Woods. You know, and there might be others, but as a rule, Lake of the Woods and and Lake Erie are the two lakes that actually have a fairly good fleet of charter boats that take people out walleye fishing. And if you've never been on a charter boat walleye fishing, you guys, you know, it's it's maybe not what you think. Um, I love going on a charter boat. It's um, it's relaxing. It's successful. It's easy. Imagine this: whether you own a boat or whether you don't own a boat. That Lake of the Woods is big water, and it can be intimidating for some, even if they do own a boat. So coming up to Lake of the Woods, and you throw four or five people in the car, you bring two people in the car, however many you want. Some people come by themselves, because our, 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 a lot of our resorts will take singles, doubles, triples, whatever. You don't have to fill the whole boat. They'll put groups together. So you, you come up to Lake of the Woods, you're not towing anything, no worries about a trailer or anything like that, saving gas. Shoot on up, and the hardest thing you got to do is find the resort because once you get to the resort, you know, uh, whether you make your own meals, whether you stay at a resort that has meals, or and if you stay at a resort that doesn't have a bar and a restaurant, I guarantee you there's going to be one within a very close proximity that does. So you can come up, have a good meal, enjoy yourself, relax. The next morning, you know, eight o'clock in the morning is when the charter boats typically leave. So you, 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 you step aboard that charter boat. What do you bring? Well, you can have the resort if you want. Um, you know, you, you pay a small fee for a, a bag lunch, and they, they load them up, big sandwiches with all the fixings, you know. Now, if you want to bring your own lunch, you're welcome to do that. You bring your own beverages. Some people bring beer. Some people bring pop and waters. Some people bring wine. I mean, whatever you want, right, whatever your fancy is. You step on board that boat. You're going to want to dress in layers. It's Minnesota in the summer. It could be cool if, it, if it's cloudy and windy, or maybe in the morning it's cool. But oftentimes it gets real hot. So you want to be able to dress in legs. You want to have rain gear with you just in case. And then, of course, sunglasses and sunscreen and that sort of thing. And, and, and usually a good hat. But you, you get out there fishing and you got a licensed charter captain that's leading your journey or your, your adventure for that day. Now, a licensed charter captain, number one, they're passionate about fishing. Number two, the, the, you know they're passionate because they've had to go through a lot of hoops in order to get and maintain a captain's license. You have to go through courses. You have to go through medical evaluations. You have to pass some very difficult tests. And then, of course, every five years, you have to get it renewed with sea service, time on the water, um, again, additional physicals. And, and so there, there's a lot of, I always have to be, for instance, I'm a licensed charter captain. Um, my brother owns a, a CBD store where they have uh, gummy bears, right? <laughs> I can't I can't try a THC gummy bear even if I wanted to because I'm on a mandatory drug consortium. Any day I could get a letter and I'd have to go take a pee test and, and get tested for drugs. You know, even though marijuana or THC is legal in some states, the Coast Guard's a federal organization and it's still not legal federally. So my only point is that you're gonna have a very dedicated charter captain, captain leading your trip. And I'll tell you, not only are they very good anglers and they're on the water all the time so they know what the fish behaviors are doing, but if they get out to a certain spot where they got them yesterday and those fish aren't there, they're networked with other captains and they're gonna share info to give you the very best experience you can have. And you know, going on a charter boat is a really, really good experience and people uh, almost all the time catch some, some nice fish. No, that's great. I, Cause the last thing you want is to see your, your charter boat captain just kind of like, all of a sudden the boat's just slowly going in circles and he's in there eating Doritos and Ho-Hos and it's like, oh man, this is great. <laughs> just sitting well, back. You're, no. you're, not, you're not speaking from experience. You've never driven a boat. <laughs> no, okay. no. But I, but I have been on those charter boats um, many times up there at Lake of the Woods, Joe. And those those guides up there are great. They've obviously got a lot of experience out on the water. They've had a lot of training. We know some people that have gone through some of that training. In fact, Dan almost went up there. And Very close. Up. And yeah. then uh, you hired me. Yeah. So I didn't do that. <laughs> Sorry just, about that. This close. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Well, you so, know, I will say this, Danny. You know what? It doesn't have to be an or. It can be an and. When I'd be willing to bet you could work for Sporting Journal Radio and get your captain's license and do that on the side once in a while just for enjoyment or just to say you have it. And the other thing I'll say is that, yep, those guys are really good up there. But there's also a few gals that are yeah. licensed charter captains also, and they do one heck of a job out there on the water. And it's uh, they're, they're, uh, you know, their they're passion is anybody. So it really is a, a neat deal. And uh, um yeah, I could, I could go on and out of stories, but Brett, you've been in a charter boat. You know, it, it's you sit back, you relax, and uh, when it's time to fish, you fish, and it's all about catching fish, having a good time, and enjoying your vacation. 
this is the other thing about being up at Lake of the Woods because it is a big body of water and, and it can get windy. And I've been out there in my little 16 foot boat with a 25 horsepower motor when it's gotten a little bit windy. And uh, I've also been on some of those charter boats. In fact, we, we were coming back through a storm one time and I'll tell you what, that charter boat, it there was no, like not one, I mean, you're always a little tense when you see a storm roll in and the waves get bigger. But I'll tell you what, those charter boats handle the weather, you know, really well. And obviously the captains and the guides there have, have experience uh, on the lake. So it was it was kind of it was kind of fun, to be honest with you. It was kind of a fun experience. And it's nice being in a boat that can handle that sort of thing. Yeah, you know, there's different kind of charter boats on Lake of the Woods, but most of them are anywhere from 27 to 30 feet long. And you know, there some are sport craft, some are grady white, some are, I mean, there's a Boston whaler I know of. There's uh, uh, some Bajas, and I could go on and on with other brand names. But my point: these are big charter boats. These are boats that people use on the ocean, and you know, they're heavy, they're big. Most of them have a restroom, um, and you know, they got good seating, ample seating, so you can sit down and such. And um, it, it, it it is fun. It's a really fun experience to to get out there in that big water and. You know, it's also enjoyable when you get on that big water and maybe in some cases, you know, you're so far from shore, but then you take a look at the, the graph and you see clouds of bait. And then the bottom you see, boom, 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 hook, 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 fish, 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 fish. You're like, holy smokes, you know, all of a sudden, boom, fish on, fish on, you know. And, and I will say this too, um, they're also, charter captains are very adept. Those charter boats are very adept at doing whatever it takes to catch fish, meaning, you know what? Um, the, the jig bite early in the year, typically early and late when the water's colder, normally is the way to go. But, you know, if they happen to be fishing on a reef where those fish are tightly schooled, heck, they can drop the jigs any time of the year. Otherwise, during the summer months, you know, like right now, drifting spinners with a bottom bouncer and a snelled spinner and a crawler is kind of the go-to. Now, um, if they're not doing that, I know already some of the, the folks, some of the captains, when the fish are spread out and they're being a little finicky, they drop down the trolling gear. Most of these charter boats are armed with downriggers, and they can put the, uh, um, you know, uh, different lures on, and they almost call it combining. You know, you got, uh, you know, four to six lines down there that are very spread out, and you are covering a big swatch of the water going through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of walleyes. And, you know, even when the walleyes have the, the tight lip, a lot of them will get that reaction swat at a, at a nice crankbait zipping by them at about two and a half or three and a half miles an hour, whatever fast they're going. And, um, it, it, it can put a lot of nice fish in the boat quickly. It's a very effective method and you can cover, cover water with it. So you can, you can move around trying to find active schools of fish. And, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, and you can vary it up and change colors or change speeds, things like that. It can be, uh, can be really effective. So Joe, if you were going to go up there this week, this time of year, would that be your first go-to presentation? My go-to presentation will be a, a two-ounce bottom bouncer and a, a snelled spinner with a crawler on it. Uh, my spinner color would be probably gold or hammered gold combined with, you know, a pink or a chartreuse or an orange or or maybe a glow red. But but that gold in Lake of the Woods, what I would do is I would put a crawler on that two-hook harness. I'd take that head of the crawler, that dark part, and i hook that through the front hook of that harness. i straighten that worm out so there's no bend in it, and i hook that second hook. Normally that second hook goes right around the band of the night crawler. Now, if you got a real big piece of worm hanging off that second hook, I pinch that baby off so that there's about three inches of night crawler tail hanging off that back hook. It's plenty. And what'll happen is you're gonna get a lot um, higher percentage of good positive hook sets when that walleye whacks your, your presentation. You wanna keep that down, Brett. I say two ounce bouncer because a two ounce bouncer will work good, you know, if you're fishing in five feet of water, but it also works really well if you're fishing in you know, 30 or 35, you can get it down there. Try to keep a, about a 45 degree angle if possible. The angle of the dangle, as they call it, uh, can be uh, one of the things Drink. that helps you catch more fish. If you are fishing by structure like a rock pile, you know what, um, I don't, that ding, I, I don't know if that means that time is up or if that means a good tip. But no, it's, tip. Every, it's, every time you say angle of the dangle now, we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> drink a drink of oh, Coca-Cola. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad thing, I'm glad you switched over to Coke, Danny. But anyway, um, as far as the angle, when you're when you, <laughs> when you're pulling that over rocks, if you're at 45 degrees, you can stay right above those rocks or whatever kind of structure. If it's not flat mud or sand, then it doesn't matter. But stay just above that stuff, and the, consequently, the angle of the angle is very important. 
Well, do we have to do it again already? Yeah, I think so, yeah. No? Yeah, yep. yep. there up. it is. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, well, if people want to go up there and, and partake in their own angle of the dangle, what should they do to plan a trip to Lake of the Woods? You check out our Facebook page. That's Real Time Info otherwise, at Lake of the Woods Tourism. Otherwise, check out our website, and that is Lake of the Woods, MN. Sporting Journal Radio is a division of Macaba LLC. If you've got a question, comment, or story idea for us, send us an email. Go to sportingjournalradio.com. While you're there, you can learn how to advertise on the show and visit our store for hats, hoodies, coffee mugs, and more. Go to sportingjournalradio.com.